What's up everyone? In today's video, we're going to talk about taking your designs and mocking them on t-shirts so they look realistic. Now this is something that's often overlooked, but if done correctly, it'll lead to more sales and happier customers. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, I wanna say thank you to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. It really means so much that you guys are watching these videos. Uh, this channel is growing like crazy and I only have you guys to thank for that, so thank you. So in today's video, we are going to talk about t-shirt mock-ups. This is basically when you're taking your rectangular design in Photoshop and putting it on a t-shirt so that you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like once it's printed. So basically the goal of this video is to make the t-shirt mock look as realistic as possible because you know nobody wants to get a t-shirt in the mail and it looks completely different from what they saw online. So this is really good for if you're doing you know a print on demand store and you don't have anything physically printed that you can take pictures of. Um, you know, you can use these mock-ups as a way to sell your designs and give your customer an idea of what they're going to get. So um, I thought the first thing we would do is kind of go through a few things of maybe what you shouldn't do when you're mocking up your designs. Um, I'm just going to jump on Instagram and show you guys a few examples that I found. Um, obviously this is just my opinion, but it does come from years of mocking up t-shirts and kind of seeing like what looks good, what doesn't, and um, seeing people, you know, make mistakes along the way. So we're hoping to avoid that with these tips and tricks. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into my computer. So I just have hashtag streetwear brand pulled up here. Um, basically, I just scrolled through and tried to find examples of, you know, clothing brands who, you know, maybe they're just getting started. They're not really sure how to do um, proper mocks, so they look a little bit off. And again, you know, this is not meant to slight anyone. It's, it's just kind of a critique to help you guys out. So here's the first example I found. So um, this is not terrible, um, but the, the first issue that I saw is that um, the placement of this graphic is too high on the t-shirt. So obviously like this is meant to be like when you're wearing the shirt, like a left chest print. Um, but right now it's too close uh, to the collar. So you'd want to bump this down. Just as like a rule of thumb, when I'm mocking up a t-shirt that has a left chest print, I'll sort of use the pit as a guideline for where I want the placement to sit. So this should definitely be bumped down a bit. The problem that can arise from this is if you sent this mock to the printer, they may or may not look at it and say, oh, maybe they want a left center chest print. So we'll bump it down for them so they can kind of get the results that they're looking for. They might look at it and say, oh, they want it to be sort of higher near the collar and this is exactly what, what they're gonna print. Technically speaking, their job is to print what you send them. So, you know, it's possible that this is exactly what they want, but I have a feeling it's meant to be down a bit more on the shirt. So, you know, always be cognizant of that when you're mocking up your designs. So let's move along. Uh, so, uh, I can't tell if this is real or not uh, but there's like there's two different images showing this t-shirt or actually three so I guess maybe they're really trying to print this um, this is not a good idea on a few levels like unless this is from a person who's like slowly losing their mind after winning the lottery um, this is insane to, to think you're gonna print this because a it's totally custom the body of this is custom. The sleeves are separate from the body because there's no print on the sleeves. So it's not a belt print. Uh, this would be incredibly expensive and it looks bad. Concept is bad. Everything about this is bad. No offense. So that's why I said maybe it's a joke. Maybe it's not. Even if this is a joke, I've seen actual clothing brands like that are just starting out mock up t-shirts that look like this and think that this is like a normal thing to print. This is not a normal thing to print. If you think like this is gonna be the same price and take the same amount of time as a normal t-shirt. No. So yeah, this sort of goes along with knowing the physical limitations of printing. You know, if it's screen printed versus belt printed versus custom garment versus all over print. Uh, there's so many different options. Ooh, I gotta like. So this is an example of a few things going on that really aren't great. I'm gonna do my best to only address the things that have to do with mocking the t-shirt. So the first thing is 
uh, this is just a square on, you know, you know, this might as well just be a black background because there's no point in using a mock like this if you're just gonna throw a square on it. Aside from the fact that this is maybe the most overused image of all time, uh, try to at least make some attempt to make it look realistic if you're gonna use a t-shirt as your mock. So looking at the back, they left the black outline around the text, which is completely redundant since the t-shirt is black. So either they need to remove the black outline or they need to change the blend mode to screen because this looks bad and yeah, it looks bad. So moving on. So this is sort of not great on a few levels. So for one, using this uh, clothes hanger mock, just stop, stop using it because so many brands have used that as their thing and it has never, it's like nine times out of 10, it just looks tacky to me. Again, this is just my opinion. The point of using this style of mock is to make it look like it's hanging on a wall or something. So the background should be like brick or like wood or like whatever, plaster, fucking corkboard. But right now it just looks like it's floating. So there's no point in using this kind of mock. Secondly, the stuff in the background that you can't even see any of it, there's no point in that. Third, the black outline around the t-shirt looks bad. See, this is what I'm saying. This design could maybe look super dope if it was just mocked up better. If it was just on like this seafoam color on a flat t-shirt mock-up with even just a white background, it might completely change my mind. So without going in too much on this particular brand, I did notice some other things when I went to their store that they could definitely adjust to make things look better. So overall, uh, just as a general tip, if your store consists of mostly t-shirts, it's really important that you use the same mock-up um, across the board for like, you know, if you're releasing like a spring summer collection, use the same mock. And then if you have like an older style that you used for a previous collection, put it in archived or put it on another page. The fastest way you can earn trust with a customer is that when they land on your page, they feel like you have your shit together. Meaning everything looks like it's from the same brand. So like as of now, you've got the two coat hanger mocks and then you've got the flat mock and then you go back to the coat hanger mock and then you've got a model mock, which, you know, when you scroll over it, it gets bigger and it's another coat hanger mock and then it's way bigger than this shirt and then you scroll onto that shirt and it's small again. It's just like, it's too much, bro. Like use either model mocks or use like a flat mock or if you want to stick with this coat hanger shit, do that, but pick one of them. Don't try to do a bunch of different ones. Um, it doesn't look good. So that's just like a quick bonus tip, I guess. It's always something I tell anyone who is starting an online store that's selling primarily t-shirts. Um, it really goes a long way and in my opinion, it'll probably boost your sales. So shout out to Yampa International. I used to live near Tampa. Um, it's super dope to see, you know, any brand from Tampa. I used to sell my own clothing brand um, at a streetwear boutique in Tampa. So definitely shout out to these guys. I hope that, you know, who knows, maybe you'll see this video and this will help you out. So from here, uh, why don't we jump into Photoshop so I can show you guys um, just sort of some general tips on how to mock up your shirts and make them look more realistic. So this is the design we're going to use. Um, I assume that a lot of you guys are, you know, designing on black backgrounds. Like 99.9% .9 of the graphics you guys send me uh, is on a black background. So with that in mind, um, that's what we're going to be doing today. So. Um, once you're ready to mock your design up on a t-shirt, you want to see how it's going to look. You can go to layer, flatten image, and just flatten this down so it's one layer. Then I like to go to image, trim, and that's basically going to get rid of any like non-essential part of the design. From here, I will scale it down to, um, like in my case, the t-shirt mockup that I'm about to use is 2400 pixels wide. So I'll just generally scale down my design to whatever the width is of the mock I'm using. So in this case, 2400, resolution 300, hit OK. Command A will grab everything uh, on your canvas and then Command C will copy it. And then we can go over to our um, mock that we're gonna be using today. And I just want to address this really quick. Um, this is a custom mock that I made. Um, this is a t-shirt that I sourced. It's a vintage boxy style t-shirt. 
Um, you know, it's got a large sort of body uh, and print area for you guys to display your graphics on. And this is just something that, um, honestly, I hadn't really intended on making a mock specifically for this channel, but I got enough messages about it, like asking either for mocks I used in my videos or mocks I used on Instagram. And I just thought it would be better to have like a fully custom mock just for you guys. Um, and really like I'm, I made this specifically for vintage bootleg sort of design since that's what you guys are doing a lot of. So, um, you know, I hope you appreciate that. So basically all of the principles that I'm using in this video will apply to any like real sort of PSD mock-up that you guys uh, either buy or if you can find something for free, um, you can still sort of follow the general guidelines that I'm using in this tutorial. So let's just get our design in here and uh, see how it looks. So when you hit Command V to paste in the design, uh, make sure that you're on a layer that is underneath highlights and shadows. Um, this highlights and shadows layer is really like what makes the mock look realistic. So it's important that you stay underneath that. So we're just gonna hit Command V, get our design in here and right away, change the uh, blend mode over on the right side to screen. So that's gonna eliminate all of the black in your design so that your t-shirt um, is showing through. From here, I'll just right click on it and hit uh, convert to smart object. And a, a quick little uh, trick that you can do here when you're scaling it down. So first of all, the reason I converted a smart, uh, smart object is because that is going to allow us to scale up and down without really compromising the integrity of the design. Because we've already resized it once, you know, down to, um, and my computer's gonna think about it. We've already, you know, resized it once. So then if we resized it again and then maybe we didn't like it and we just kept resizing it or whatever it's just gonna look less it's gonna look blurrier and blurrier and just look worse so if you convert to a smart object right away you can avoid that so once you're ready to scale it down here hold down the option key and just grab the corner and just bring it in and that will you know assuming that your t-shirt mock-up is centered on the canvas it will automatically bring it to the center of the t-shirt. So from here, um, you know, once you brought it down, holding down option, and you've got it sort of sized where you want it, let go and hold down shift, and then just kind of slide it up. So that's just, you know, a really quick way to do it rather than, you know, messing around and trying to get the placement perfect. Um, just a quick little tip. So from here, what I like to do is mess with the opacity and generally I've found that anywhere between 70 and 90 percent looks good um, it sort of depends on the style of the design you know if you're doing something that is inherently supposed to look super bright you know I would probably just go to like 90 um, but basically um, this is just like a stylistic choice in my opinion it just makes it look a, the tiniest bit more um, you know, like it's been screen printed. So it's just something that I do. So if you guys want to do it, uh, cool. If not, you know, it should still look fine. But um, for this one, we're going to go down to 80% because it is meant to look, um, you know, more vintage. So maybe even 75. Yeah, let's call it 75. So the next thing I would do here is I can see this little bit of like a hard edge here at the bottom. It's like barely noticeable, but it's going to bug the shit out of me. So a real quick fix to that is just going to adjustments, brightness, use legacy, bring down the brightness a little bit, up the contrast a little bit, and um, that'll get rid of that. So, I mean, that's looking pretty good. Um, in this mock, there's three different options, uh, black, vintage black, and super vintage black. Uh, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the graphics that you guys are sending me are on black shirts. So that's really what I tried to keep in mind for this. Um, so I'm gonna use Vintage Black for this. Um, you know, That's another thing that I want you guys to consider though um, when you're mocking your t-shirts is make sure that the colors you're using exist in the real world. Like unless you plan on um, completely, you know, outsourcing this to a, you know, custom 
garment manufacturer and they're going to do a custom body for you and a custom color and all this crazy shit. Um, you know, jump on a site like SS Active Wear or, uh, you know, any other um, wholesale website. And I'll link to SS Active Wear below because they have, you know, just a really great selection of t shirt colors. And so, you know, in this case, this, you know, black is obviously a color that exists in the world. Vintage black, you could easily source this a color like this and uh, super vintage black again. It'd be very easy to find something similar to this. Basically, I just named them vintage black and super vintage black to sound cool. If this was an actual design we were going to get printed, um, you know, I would make sure that the colors match up to whatever blanks it is that we're printing on. So really quick, I just wanted to show you guys where you can find this um, t-shirt mock-up that we use today. It's just over at fuller.mo slash downloads. Um, this is the newest thing I've added. Um, you know, this, this comes with six different files. They're all um, really big, 2400 pixels by 2400 pixels for um, the mock-ups that are just the t-shirt uh, front and just the back. And then there's also a uh, PSD that's a front and back, uh, you know, both side by side. So that's gonna be, you know, 2400 pixels by 4800. Um, I also made the t-shirt into a muscle tee, which looked pretty fucking cool. So that option's in here as well. Um, like I said in the video, there's three different color options. It's all layered, all that good stuff. So if you want to grab that, it's over here for um, five bucks. Um, it's the same, you know, price as like any of the other single downloads in here, um, with the exception of like the texture pack and I think the, that's it. Yeah, so um, the other thing I wanna cover on here is you guys have been asking me to create a download that is everything that I have for sale in one package. So that's what I did. Um, you know, the price should prob probably be more like closer to 40 if I was actually any good at math. But um, I just threw it up here for 22 bucks. This is literally like, it's everything. You know, all the presets I have in my, if you've seen my, video on uh, bootleg rap textiles. It has that in it. it, has the modern version of that as well. It has a couple extra, you know, shirt mock-ups if you want to use those. They're custom bleach, custom tie-dye. Um, the bootleg wrap selective color pack is in here if you've seen that video. Um, or if you haven't seen that video, check that out um, because I use um, that process all the time when I'm designing uh, bootleg wrap stuff. And then of course it has the 15 vintage textures in here. This is uh, a texture pack of stuff that I literally use every single day. This is what I've used to design shirts for Wu-Tang Clan, Nirvana, Def Leppard, Kiss, tons of uh, different bands and artists. So um, really, I mean, if you're just hitting this channel or you're just hitting this download page for the first time, this is the best value. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna end up paying way more. And I mean, if you wanna put some more money in my pocket, that's cool, but uh, I'm just telling you this is the best deal. So that is it. Uh, it's at fuller.mo slash downloads. So here's a quick story about how important it is to have really good mocks. So when I was creative director at a pretty big merchandising company, um, I was working with a freelance designer who sent over, it was like 15 or 20 designs and um, the, his mocks were so good. Three or four of the designs were so fucking simple, but because of the way he mocked them up and because of how he made them look so realistic, it completely changed the way I perceived the design. So don't get me wrong. First things first, your design has to be good. If your mock-up is super low resolution or blurry or grainy or whatever it is, um, it's going to impact how the viewer looks at your design in a negative way. So if the goal is to create really good designs, you should also accompany that with really good t-shirt mock-ups. So that is it for today. If you haven't already subscribed, please just take a second, hit the subscribe button. It really would mean so much to me. And uh, you know, that way we can get these videos and this channel out to as many people as possible so everybody can design dope shit and uh, yeah, we'll all be cool together. Definitely be sure to like and comment as well. 
Um, you guys have been so awesome in the comments. You're really giving some great suggestions on things I could do in the future, some things you'd um, you know, like me to improve on. I'm open to any and all ideas that you guys have. Um, because like I said, without you guys, uh, this channel wouldn't be here. As always, you can also hit me up on Instagram. It is at fuller.moe. You can DM me and um, I'll do my best to uh, you know, give you guys advice or answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm always stoked to hear from you guys. Be safe everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.